Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Brian Weber. Welcome to another YouTube video. And in this video, I wanna talk about something that I use in my trading quite a bit. And I think it would be helpful to incorporate this type of strategy, or not so much strategy, the type of charts. So I'm gonna talk about tick charts. It's also comparable to using like a range chart or a Renko bar um, as compared to your typical time-based time charts. So some of the main reasons why I use tick charts in conjunction with the time charts is that the, the time charts themselves, they are based on a fixed time period. So if you use five minute candles in your day trading, every five minutes you have a candle print with X amount of volume, whatever the candle is, you got a high, low, open, low, high, low, open and close and the candle and it doesn't really tell you like the full picture of what's happening, especially during volatile periods in the market, where if you trade NASDAQ, especially in the futures market, that is a beast when in the markets are volatile. You can have like a 100 point plus candle on a five minute candle. I mean, we've seen it plenty of times, and how do you even know where to get in when you see a candle like that? The answer is, is you have to use a different type of chart. Even using a one minute chart, I wouldn't even recommend doing that because it's still based on a fixed time period. If you use something called a tick chart, it's based on, I like to think of it, a tick chart is based on the number of trades that are taken within that candle bar. So it gives you an idea of what the, the traders are thinking, what the sentiment is, and it gives you more granularity when you're looking at these volatile periods. And especially when there's no movement in the market, you're not going to have candles printing if no one's trading, right? Even if the time, if in a 5, 10, 15 minutes goes by, uh, you're only waiting for the candle to print based on what traders are actually doing. Um, and you can recognize your trade entries and exits a lot sooner. And you'll be able to see market structure a lot clearer, a lot more clear using a tick chart. So what I really want to do is show you guys some examples with have a time chart on one side and then a tick chart on the other and show you different, show you what a, a time period chart looks like. And then let's take a look at a tick chart and show you the types of differences that I'm talking about. So hopefully this will help you in your trading. So let's jump into that. So before we go into the examples, I wanna quickly just recap on what I just talked about. So the difference between time charts and tick charts, specifically when day trading. So I don't use tick charts when swing trading. This is specifically for day trading. So again, time charts based solely on an arbitrary time, whereas tick charts are based on the number of trades taken. Time charts are great, but they do not give the full picture of market structure. In other words, market structure as in higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, and lower highs, stuff like that, recognize the trend, it's, and what traders are doing, which is represented in the price action, especially during volatile moves. For tick charts, they show a clear picture of market structure and what traders are doing, especially during volatile moves. And for time charts, I typically use time charts for a bigger picture, like profit target to identify profit targets where I would want to exit my trade. But then I would look to the tick charts to identify when I should get out um, because you'll be able to see the reversals happen sooner on the tick charts. And also, Tick charts will compress low activity periods, so you won't have a bunch of candles printing that are pretty much meaningless. So let's jump into some examples. All right, so here we have the NASDAQ features. I'm just gonna first look at Friday's price action. So I'm going to try to show both equally on, it, on both sides. I got the time chart, the five minute chart on the left-hand side, and you got your tick chart. I'm using 233 tick on the right-hand side. So you can adjust the number of ticks based on your trading style. The smaller number of ticks that you use on your tick chart will show the price action in more granular way. So if you're a scalper, you probably want to have a smaller tick chart. So I've zoomed in here. Let me zoom in on the tick chart here. So I'm showing like the first uh, two hours before the market open on Friday and all the rest of the day's price action. I'm going to try to find the same on the tick chart. So first let's look at the cash open. So 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is this giant down big red candle right here on the left side on the five minute chart. So if we match it up over here, I'm just going to zoom in. This is the first, trying to capture like the first 30 minutes of the market open on this chart. Okay. So here is 6.30. Here's the market open. 
right about here. Let me draw a line just to be able to see a little bit better on both sides. So we have pre-market support here. Uh, I drew that on the five minute candle. It's about 10,410 half. So let's just say 10,410. Um, so if we zoom in here a little bit more, you can see strong, strong area support before this candle decides to break. You can kind of see we tested it, shot up a little bit, retested this uh, old support area. Now it became resistance, which is around the 10,415 to the 20 area. And you can see the lower highs being formed. We're in a down channel here on the tick chart. A little bit harder to see uh, on, the, on the five minute chart because some people probably would expect this level to hold, but it did not. And you can kind of see this second candle, this candle right here on the break at cash open was a dead giveaway that this was a short at open because it opened and broke that support and closed right below it. And on this candle right here, you just see it almost looks like a doji candle. Sold off, went down, and then it eventually reversed. And you can kind of see there's a nice inverted hammer. There's probably some support, some short-term support here at 10,380. And then we ran some buy stops up. And then we started forming higher lows and then higher highs in the short term to run back up a little more before we decided to sell off again. So let's zoom in. So as our first five minute candle closes, it kind of looks like we have a doji, like an equal, it looks like a little bit more of a longer length, longer wick on the lower end. Uh, the body is almost in the middle, but it looks like there's a fight here. You can kind of see we ran up and up and tested this candle up here around 10,430, kind of consolidated here. And this is like the main point of the video here. You see one big five minute candle here, looks like a doji, but on the tick chart, you see these rotations here. So these rotations happening, um, like, or in other words, you can call it a consolidation too, but I like to call them rotations. It's seeing, it's just building value here and holding until it breaks one way or the other. So you have support here around 10,425 to 26. And then top of that is about five to six points. So you could in fact just scalp this once you see a level hold um, once, you could try it two or three more times until it doesn't hold anymore. Um, and then you can clearly see once that doesn't hold, we break down and slice through all this support. And on this candle, you just see a giant big red candle on the five minute chart. But on the tick chart here, you can see after we have violated all these previous highs that should have held that support if the bulls were going to show up, we actually, this was a strong area that I would have wanted to see hold, which was the 10,400 area. You can see how we broke it and you can see the wicks coming in here. So it's a very low risk entry to get in short with their stop just above there. Like you only need like a five point stop, hundred bucks to make, you know, <laughs> a lot. So, I mean, the risk reward is there. That's how you can use the tick chart to identify entries. And you just can't see that on a time chart. You just see one big red candle. Tick chart, you see the lower lows, you see the lower highs, you see us breaking down support. You see these little rotations up to enter short, breaks the previous low, comes up, tests the previous low, which is now resistance and it goes down, keeps breaking new lows. and your job right now as a trader when you see this is this specific scenario is to get in short because we're making lower lows and lower highs and breaking previous market structure supports, especially once we broke this level, the 10,380. Any retest should have been shortable until we get down to some kind of obvious reversal area. Like if I scroll this way, this was a, lo uh, a lower high here around 10 minutes after the market opened. You can kind of see it on this candle. There's a high wave candle right here, kind of an inside candle, pushed up, came back, retested. That would have been a low, a really low risk entry long around the 10,325 to come back up and test this resistance. And I wouldn't be holding it if I was counter trend fading, I would be looking to take profits quick, um, keeping risk tight since you're taking the trade direction, the opposite direction of the trend. But the only reason why I would say this looks like a good long is because we made a higher low here and it held and then there was just a nice buy stop run up and then we just dumped 
like another 50 points down to where we actually saw a decent reversal on the five minute chart. You can kind of see that we're holding there and there's a good possibility that we could push back up. And here, once we push back up this resistance, there's just a lot of rotations coming down. We're holding this area. This is like another support area right here where we used to hold. 10,340, 10,342. You can kind of see came back up, retested, held, came back up, retested, held. So you could have got in long there and kept scalping in this range here. And you can also see these there. You can see the up channels on the tick chart. You can't see that on the five minute chart. You can see how we had a failed breakout above here and came back in it. Then we dumped, went back below here, the 10,400. 40, uh, 342, excuse me. It was short, definitely short, expecting on a move lower. But once we broke back above here, the target was I mean, to the upside. There was more momentum up there. And look, we hit, we hit the same trend line again. And then we're like back in this channel. It's almost like we didn't break the channel. If you just remove this one part, it happens all the time to run stops and get people out of their trades before the actual move happens. And you just cannot see that. You can't see these types of moves as clear on the five minute chart, it's just impossible. Even on the one minute chart, I would, I would argue that it, it doesn't, you can't see these, these patterns playing out as best as you can on the tick chart. So you can use the tick chart. This is just one example, but I would highly recommend to go through and, and look at either trades that you've taken or that you were looking at taking, either they're winners or losers and Take a look at where your entries were. Take a look at a tick chart next to your time chart if you're using time charts and just look at how much of a better entry, how much better you could have saw the price action to either get a better entry or to have less risk when you enter the trade. So if you're wrong, you know you're gonna be wrong quickly and you're gonna lose a lot less money than you would have if you were using time-based charts. And as you, scroll to, as you scroll to the right, I mean, you can just see the trend, it's beautiful. You could obviously get in on the five minute chart on these the retests of the open and closes, but if you're moving pretty quickly, you want to be able to see these, these uh, price moves in a more granular fashion. So you have a better idea of where to have a, a lower risk entry for a higher reward than you would on a time period chart. Again, to recap, tick charts, you can see the trend so much easier. You can see your entries and exits so much easier. And it's going to help you significantly reduce your risk on each trade, especially when we have volatility where we don't have the insights into the price action on a time chart like we do on a tick chart. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'd be more than happy to help you. That's what I'm here for. That's what this channel is for, to help you become a better trader. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys all the support and the new subscribers. Thanks for being here. Uh, and I look forward to giving you guys more content that will hopefully help you become a better trader. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, don't forget to click my logo that's popping up now. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I upload a video. And you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend. And this week when you're trading, manage your risk and let price discover be your guide. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.